Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Brilliant Bankers. So we are discussing about prevention of cyber crime and fraud management. So we are in module B. So in module B, the next topic is Information Technology Act uh, 2008. So in this topic, we will be discussing a few sections and some IT rules. So let's get started. So the main Indian act that address legal challenges specifically as they relate to internet is the Information Technology Act. For short, it is called as IT Act. So in this, uh, we have highlighted a few sections which give some greater relevance for the internet and democracy. So let's see what are those uh, sections. So first one is section 69A and the blocking rules. That is allowing the government to block the content under certain circumstances. So this act allows the central government to block the content where it believes that this content threatens the security of the state or the sovereignty, integrity or defense of India, friendly relationship with foreign states, public order, or to prevent incitement for the commission of a cognizable offense relating to any of the above. A set of procedures and safeguards to which the government has to adhere when doing so have been laid down in what have be become known as the blocking rules. Then the next section is section 79 and the IT rules that is privatizing censorship in India. So this rule of the information technology regulates the liability of wide range of intermediaries intermediaries in India. So this section came in the limelight mostly because of the uh, infamous intermediary guideline rules or the IT rules. So which we, uh, were made under it. So this IT rules constitute an important and worrying move towards the privatization of censorship in India. Next is section 67 and 67A. No nudity please. So this, uh, the large amounts of obscene material that circulate on the internet have long attracted comment in India. So it's not surprisingly that in the same way as obscenity is prohibited offline in the country. So it is online as well. The most important tool to curtail it are section 67 and 67A of the IT Act, prohibiting obscene and sexually explicit material. Next is Section 66A, do not send offensive messages. So this act of 2008 prohibits the sending of offensive messages through a communication device, maybe through the online medium, uh, through the phone, uh, email chat or something like that. The ty this type of information, this covers an offensive message of a men menacing character or a message that sender known to be false but it is sent for the purpose of causing annoyance or the inconvenience or danger, obstruction or to insult or to in, um, injury or the criminal intimidation, enmity, hatred or ill will. So if uh, it happened, you will be booked under this section and you could face some three years imprisonment along with the fine. Next is freedom of expression. So what is freedom of expression? This is to balance of freedom of expression with other human rights is at times uh, a difficult and delicate task. So uh, for a hate speech to intermediary liability, we tease out and shed greater light on the various challenges that make this task particularly very complicated. So prop proposing ways forward that can further strengthen and right to freedom of expression in India and beyond as well. Okay, next is cyber security, surveillance, and human rights. So, with the advancement of the new technology, new security threats also have emerged for the people, business, or uh, it's for the states. So, responses to such threats, including states or excise uh, of them, uh, their uh, power uh, to surveil their populations, have been criticized for the negative impact on human rights. The, the, inf the IT Act 
to amend that IT Act 2000 received the assent of the president on 5th February 2009. The several legal and security experts are in the process of analyzing the content and possible impacts of the amendments. The objective of this note is to try and study the possible implications and impact on Indian companies. So this is to note intended to be a comprehensive analysis of the amendments, but only certain key points which could impact Indian companies. Next is data security. So here also you have a few sections that is section 43A and section 72A. So let's see what is data security and what is this act. So according to IT Act of 2000, if you have any specific reference to data protection, the closest being of a provision to treat the data vandalism of an, as an offense. So the government introduced a separate bill called Personal Data Protection Act of 2006, which is pending the, in the parliament and is likely to lapse. So the ITA Act, uh, 2008, Act 2008 has introduced two sections which address the data protections. So these two sections, the, the sections are, as I said, for, uh, 43 and 72A. So section 43A is uh, compensation for failure to protect data. Next, uh, section 72A is punishment for disclosure of information in breach of lawful contract. So let's see in detail, section 43A first. So, where a body corporate possessing, dealing or handling any sensitive personal data or information in a computer resource which it owns, controls or operates, it is negligent in implementing and maintaining reasonable security practices and procedures and can cause wrongful loss or wrongful gain to any person. So, such body corporate shall be liable to pay damages by way of compensation to the person so affected. So by way of uh, the body corporate means Indian companies. So reasonable security practices means a mutual contract between the customer and the service provider as per the specified law. In absence of both, then as specified by the central government, it would be important for an Indian company to seriously look at the uh, SLAs and agreements which have been assigned with the clients to understand the data protection implications. So major modification in this is the uh, clauses doesn't mention that compensation limit of rupees 1 crore, which has that a part of the section 43 uh, of the ITA uh, 2000. This implies that there is no upper limit for damages that can be claimed. This is essentially an unlimited liability for the Indian companies, which could cause serious business implication. So next we'll see uh, section 72. So in the section, uh, disclosure without consent exposes a person, including an intermediary for or to th three years imprisonment of fine up to rupees five lakhs or both. So this means the term personal information and not sensitive personal information as in Act, uh, Act 43, Section 43A. So it could apply to any information which is obtained in order to deliver service. So in some ways, broadens the definition of information. The next is <clears throat> information preservation. So across the amendments, there are several references to service providers or intermediaries, which in some form would apply to all Indian companies. So here you have a few examples. That is, first section is section 67C. So this says preservation and retention of information by intermediaries. Means the intermediaries, uh, intermediary shall preserve the and retain such information may be specified for such duration in which manner and format as a central government may prescribe. That is, any intermediary who is intentionally or knowingly uh, contra uh, contravenes the provision shall be punished with the imprisonment for a term which may extend up to three years and uh, the fine is also there. 
the notification on the time of preservation are yet not released. However, this is a cognizable offense. Any police inspector can start in investigations against the CEO of a company. Next is, um, apart from this uh, two aspects, uh, we have uh, two more sections. That is uh, section 69, power to issue directions for the interception or monitoring or decryption of any information through any computer resource. And section 69B is power to authorize to monitor and collect traffic data or information through any computer resource for cyber security. So the IT risk management and response need to be looked at all, by all the companies for various reasons. So <clears throat> including customer assurance, complaints, customer regulations, protections for information, etc. So this IT Act um, uh, 2008 amendments provides that few additional factors for considerations, which could have significant impact on the business. <clears throat> Excuse me. The information technology regulations and laws would only get for more stringent, stringent and defined. Hence, it is imperative for our organization to be aware and prepared. The information system, at this IS audit group, access the university's critical system, technology, architecture, and process to assure information assets are protected, reliable, available, and compliant with university policies and procedures, as well as uh, applicable laws and regulations. So we emphasize that the importance of uh, mitigating the security risk during an audit coverage or of the university applications operating and networking systems. So through our integrated and IT governance audit, we uh, evaluate information technology impact on the in university's process and its abilities to achieve its goals and objectives. So our evaluations are objective and professional utilizing. COBIT, that is control objectives for information and related technology framework and international standard for the good IT control practices. Next is ISA provides the following audit services. So let's see what are the audit services. First one is IT governance. So IT governance audits, is, this includes the review of the organization's uh, responsibility in satisfying the quality of the IT delivery services, which aligning the business objectives and establishing an adequate system for the internet internal controls. Next is information system. So this information system audits the security con controls of physical and logical security of the server, including that change control, uh, administration of server accounts, system logging and monitoring incident handling, system backup and disaster recovery. Next is integrated audits. The integrated audits is reviews of the business operations and the dependency of the automated system to support the business process. So this considers information technology and financial operation process as mutual dependent for establishing an eff effective and efficient control environment. So from the technology perspective, the audit focuses on the application controls, administration of user process, application change control and backup and recovery to assure reliability, integrity and availability of the data. Next is control self-assessment. So control self-assessment is that it is designed for the departments that manages and operates a technology environment. So these self-assessment tools can be used to identify a potential areas of control, weakness in the management of the technology environment. And the last one is compliances. The compliance audits include the university policies and procedures, that is payment card industry, PCI, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, that is HIPAA, Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA, and any other applicable laws and regulations. So that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you liked my video. If you like the my, uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.